Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is our Rice News analyst, Emmanuel Erda Malabai Tiffany. Good morning. Good morning, Ruben. <laughs> Good morning, morning Rufai. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Victoria. <laughs> Tundu MKO Abiola. <laughs> Good morning, yes, that smash hit, <laughs> African Queen. I won't Thank sing you. the song. No, so, please sing. No, I won't. I won't, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's go straight to the review. We start with this day newspapers, Nigeria's newspaper of records. The lead story, three months after Kasina Kaduna, Niger battle to rescue 109 um, abductees. Sokoto, local government chairman, others take refuge in Niger Republic. Khan, that is the Christian Association of Nigeria, urges federal government to free RCCG members. Yes, so members of the redeemed Christian Church of God are also still in captivity. Sad tale all the way about these abductees who are still languishing in kidnappers' den. But it's not all bad news in Nigeria as these day newspapers, yes, if we go into the page, yes, page 44 of these day newspapers, special report only in this day, Nigeria's newspaper of record, Nigeria's new oil. Meet some of Nigeria's leading tech entrepreneurs, yes, with a drastic shift from agrarian, industrial, and information ages, the, the future is now tied to providing knowledge-based solutions to practical problems in education, medicine, commerce, and industry, as well as environment. Of course, Nigeria is not left behind. This is one good news we must also uh, commend. And DZ has listed a number of these young Nigerians who are making him roads. Without building factories, they simply deploy IT and basic engineering to create stupendous wealth with less um, manual effort, while it is the same time, at the same time um, impacting lives on universal scale. Now, these startups, if you recall that USA with 713, no, not with 62,573 United States lead the way in the number of startups. Nigeria is up there. One of those uh, figures you say, yes, for Nigeria is up there with 713. Nigeria ranks number 16 globally and is above, wait for it. Countries like Sweden with 663, China with 589, Japan 524, and South Africa with 436. The value of their share and that of the unicorns which speak to the financials of these startups are of course much lower in Nigeria. But Ruben, Rufai, and Tundu. This is something we must share, that we have our own young Nigerians who are doing great in the tech area, which this day has dubbed Nigeria's new oil. I mean, I'm excited uh, that this day has, you know, led the way again in showcasing these people, but it's been on for a while and these people have been doing quite well. So if I'm going to chart this, the story of Nigeria's tech, I'm not even going to say it started now. I'm going to say it started in the 90s. What a lot of people don't know is that most of the apps used in the banking sector in the 90s were developed by Nigerians for these sectors in Nigeria. So it started way back in the 90s. And when you start to chart the story of the likes of System Spec, you know, John Barrett, way back in the 90s, developing you know, apps for operations in the banks and things like that, up to the 2000s, and now the new wave that is coming up with a lot of young people providing solutions, the likes of Flutterwave, Andela, and the likes. This is just to show you that Nigerians have always played a very major role in tech and across African continent. What I just want us to do is to be able to harness this resource, let it really filter through 
let people really see the need for it. I mean, because when you look at what Silicon Valley is doing to the economy of America, a lot of people are feeling it. A lot of people are feeling it. We want that trickle-down effect. And the government has done some work as regards this. You know, so it's not all doom and gloom as regards the government. Because I remember that the government of, uh, I think it was Good Luck Jonathan, set up uh, Idea Hub. I used to be a mentor on Idea Hub where we mentored a lot of small startups and the likes. But I don't know how that is going in. You know, so that was government set up incubator center. And we should have many more of that. Yeah, you know, we need to, many more of that. You know, Ruben, to be able to we need start that, that growth well, and start that <clears> understanding <throat> for tech development. But we're doing quite well. Like I said before, over three or four tech companies worth over one billion uh, dollars in capitalization. That's well. And very soon, maybe in the nearest future, most of the mostly capitalized companies in Nigerian stock exchange will be tech companies. The wave has started. Well, I mean, you mentioned the Jonathan administration. Let's put it on record that it was under President Jonathan uh, that the Ministry of Communications Technology was first, uh, you know, uh, established. And, you know, uh, under that, uh, the minister at the time uh, did a lot of work, Mrs. Uh, Mubala, uh, Mrs. Johnson, or uh, Mubala Johnson, and provided that foundation uh, that has resulted uh, into the achievements that we have seen. But in that regard, the point I would like to make is that policy is important. I mean, we had a situation recently when the central bank came up with uh, a policy that didn't quite favor the uh, fintechs. And that was a point that was brought up uh, when Flutterwave made that breakthrough uh, in terms of uh, investment and going to the uh, you know, uh, global stage. And people were saying, well, I mean, <laughs> Flutterwave has, has made it in spite of uh, uh, government policy. So yes, tech, Nigeria's new oil, but that particular sector of the economy will survive if there is commitment on the part of government to provide an enabling environment and to ensure that government does not sabotage this emerging aspect of the uh, economy uh, with wrong uh, policies. That's the first point. Second point, if you look at the uh, persons that have been profiled uh, by this day, these are majorly young persons. There's even an Abiola there, I think, uh, Tundun's niece. Yeah. Uh, she's, not she's not your niece? <laughs> okay, well, but... There is, a, there is an Abiola there, and you have people from different families, you know. Uh, they are all young. They are in their 30s. They are in their, you know, uh, late 30s. And that shows you the power of young people, of youth. It's not just about uh, protest. It's also about entrepreneurship, about innovation, about creativity. And what that means, again, at the level of policy, is that Nigeria will do well because the oil is not in the tech. It's in the creativity and the innovativeness and entrepreneurship of young Nigerians who are the future. President uh, Buhari uh, referred to uh, many Nigerians as diamonds. These are the diamonds being celebrated. We started this program this morning by uh, talking about uh, Femi additional statement about people focusing on the positive side of what is happening under the Buhari administration. This is precisely what this day has done yes, the on, uh, on its uh, pages uh, 44. Uh, going forward, concentrating on positive stories coming out of Nigeria. The government itself must encourage those positive stories and not turn those positive stories into negatives uh, by its own choices, uh, by the kind of politics that the leadership of Nigeria uh, plays. Tundu, That's the point, my view. Tundu, Tundu MK Abiola, <laughs> for clarity. Yes. Please clarify. <laughs> there are violas and then there are yes, okay, violas. Go ahead. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. But well, unfortunately, we don't have enough time, oh yeah, do we? Oh yeah, I can't oh yeah. hear you, Director. Okay. Yeah, we okay. don't have time. Thank you, Mr. Fenn.